All right, so here is my Goal Zero Yeti 1000. And this is charging with the standard eight millimeter wall charger plugged into the standard input here. Uh, it's at 12%. And according to the specs, this will take 18 hours to charge on the wall. And that jives with what this is saying. So battery is somewhat full. So we're at 16 and a half hours to full, which honestly is pretty ridiculous. Goal Zero should have shipped with a much beefier charger here. And you can see that the standard charger on the standard port is putting out between 53 and 55 watts. Now we can do a little bit better if we install the MPPT module, which is right here. So I just installed this a few minutes ago. And you can see this now has these eight millimeter inputs as well. So let's plug in and see how much faster the charging will go this way. Okay, so we just plugged in the standard wall charger to the eight millimeter MPPT input. Now this is normally meant for optimizing solar input, but it also helps with our standard DC input. You can see here, if we look at the input now, this has jumped up significantly. So this is now running at about 70 or 71 watts. So we're talking about at least 20% increase here. So uh, at the very least, if you have the NPPT module installed on your Yeti 1000, you might as well plug the wall outlet in there too, because it will charge quite a bit faster. And you can see now the hours to full has dropped quite a bit. Now it's at 12.3. But really, we want to charge this thing much, much faster. So how do we do that? Well, I talked to Goal Zero, I chatted with them, and they said that you can use more chargers than the standard one. You can see now we can plug one in here, we can plug one in here, we can plug one in here, and we actually have one here, or two here, that we could plug into. So. Uh, there are a few options. So what I decided to do is to go big or go home. So I went ahead and I purchased three additional Goal Zero chargers. So each one of these, I think right now is $40. So it's $120 for these three chargers. Uh, and the advantage of this is if you wanted to charge this with a generator, you can char charge it much, much faster because now we can hook all these up in parallel and so when I spoke to Goal Zero what they recommended doing is actually using this charging cable here so this has an Anderson power pole at the end and then that has four eight millimeter female inputs so you can just plug all of your chargers directly into this so let's plug it in and see what the difference is Okay, so I just plugged in all four of these. You can see this is going into the four power bricks, and those are in turn going into a power strip. So we have all of these chargers hooked up, and they all go into the four 8mm inputs. And then there's a really beefy cable here, and that ends up with this vertically stacked Anderson power pole connection. And I think that's pretty smart because if you look on the front here, uh, there is power pole here for output, but that's actually horizontal. They're side by side and they use the vertical one for inputs here and on the MPPT, which I think is smart. It keeps you from doing something dumb like plugging this in here. So let's go ahead and plug this into the standard input and see what happens. That's now in. I'll give it a minute to figure itself out. Uh, as soon as you plug this in, I don't know if you can hear that, but the fans kicked on because there's a lot more power going in here and it has to stay cool. And you can see by looking at the front panel here, now our input has increased to 220 watts or so. And our hours to full is 5.6 and dropping and so it takes a little while for this thing to figure out how long it will take so 
Just give it a minute here to, to settle down. You also notice that as it works through, uh, the number of watts on the input are slowly creeping up, just a little bit. So it looks like connecting four chargers to the standard Anderson power pole input. Catch about 220 watts, and you can see the time to full here is five, and that's with a 13% battery. So even completely empty, um, this should do it in around five hours, which is, which is pretty good. So now that's, in my mind, a pretty reasonable charging time. But we can do a little bit better by plugging this into this input up here. So let's go ahead and unplug this. Plug it in up here. So that's going. It's thinking. The fans just kicked on. Let's go back and look at what the display says now. So you'll remember it was at 250 or so. And let's see what this does. This is the point in the program where I mute the audio from the video because that fan noise was driving me crazy. Now we can see the amount of watts is at 254. When I was playing with this before, it was creeping up closer to almost 260, so I think it just takes a while to settle in. But you'll remember that on the standard Anderson power pole input, this was much closer to 220 watts, so um, 30 watts is pretty good increase. That's basically another half a charger right there, because each charger puts out between 50 and 60 watts closer to 60. So, you know, I think we're in pretty good shape here. And you can see the time to full has dropped down to 4.3 and it continues to spiral down. So it's much, much better charging times. And honestly, this is what I would expect Goal Zero should have shipped with this unit to begin with. When I was chatting with them, they actually mentioned that in spring of 2019, they're going to be coming out with a charger that's going to be a lot faster. According to Goal Zero, and this is probably on the DL, um, they're going to be coming out with this 350 watt charger that will charge the Yeti in 45 hours and be $150. Um, I decided not to wait because really this setup here is pretty much identical. Uh, their new charger will have an Anderson connector and will charge it in the same amount of time. So I don't see a huge advantage in waiting. So you're probably wondering, well, what's the big deal? Why not just plug it into the wall and not worry about it if it takes 10 or 20 or 30 hours, it's just sitting there. But my plan is to get a small propane generator and that only has 700 watts of output. So where this power strip is, that'll be plugged into my propane generator. And so my hope is that I can just run that for say four hours at a shot and top this off and then be working off of battery power for the majority of the day. Um, I'm gonna be supplementing this also with solar panels, but uh, just in terms of the sheer amount of watts that you can jam into this unit, uh, you can't beat running a $300 Ryobi propane generator whose fuel never goes bad. Um, just to jam, you know, a thousand watts into this unit in just a matter of four hours. Um, in contrast, if you had a 100 watt solar panel, uh, assuming losses, um, even on a sunny day, you'd be lucky to get 300, 350 watt hours out of that solar panel and into this unit. So um, this setup with that inexpensive propane generator will essentially be as, at least as powerful as having uh, three or four or even 500 watt solar panels uh, running on a bright sunny day. So I hope this helps. Uh, this information wasn't clear to me when looking at the Goal Zero site. So uh, if you want your unit to charge faster, get yourself uh, some more power adapters and cram a lot of watts into this unit in a hurry. Uh, thanks.